Hey, what's up? Nasir Malik here. Today we'll be looking at the Selenium IDE record and playback functionality and record a simple script. We will export recorded script as Python script and bring it into the PyCharm to do a walkthrough. This is not required for building an automation framework, but it is very helpful for beginners to get familiar with this. So in this tutorial, we will be covering following. Install Selenium IDE for Firefox browser. Record a script with Selenium IDE. Export script from Selenium IDE as Python script. Add the script to PyCharm project and execute. Script walkthrough and understand Selenium syntax. So let's install Selenium IDE. First launch your Firefox browser and navigate it to the following link. I will add all the links below the video. So once you navigate to this URL and you're on this page, you should see Selenium IDE add-on. This is a Firefox add-on. To install Selenium IDE add-on for Firefox, you click on this button. You click on this install pop-up and it will ask you to restart the Firefox. Click restart and Firefox should automatically restart. Once the Firefox restart, you should see Selenium IDE button here. And also you can access it through the tools, Selenium IDE. Once you click on it, it launches a Selenium IDE recorder. When the Selenium IDE is launched, it is automatically is in the recording mode. You can start and stop recording mode by clicking this button. Recording is stop. You click again, recording is started. To start recording, you can navigate to your web application. And you start interacting with your application to record events. And as you can see, while I'm doing interaction with this app, it is recording. One thing I want to mention here, when you're recording, if these values are pre-selected, make sure you change them, otherwise it will not record these events. So like, for example, if I select the same arriving in destination, you won't see an event recorded. But if I change it and change it back, I can always remove the first one. Good rule of thumb is you always finish recording where you start your recording. So now I'm going to stop this recording, try to play back this script. As you see, um, the script played back and it was very fast. I can rerun it again. So let's look at the script. Script has two views, table and a source. So if you click on the source, the script looks like something like HTML code. You can go back to the table view. Let's look at the script line by line. So first line is doing navigating to a specific URL. It says open. It's opening the browser and it's going to a particular URL. We can execute this script step by step. 
for an example, if I navigate to a different URL, right click, I can click on this menu, execute this command, and it will navigate to a site that we recorded with. So let's look at the script. Script has three columns, command, target, value. The command is the action you're going to perform on an element. The target is the identification of the element. How do you want to find that element? By name, by ID, by class, by XPath. And the value is what value you're going to use. So some of the step will have values and some will be empty. So like text box or a drop down list box will have values. Buttons will not have value because it's just a click action. So command is basically an action, the action you want to perform in a given element. Target is basically a locator, how the um, Selenium locates an element on a web page. And the value is if you're inputting or selecting a value. So basically these are the three things that you can change here. I'm not going to go through all these commands. Uh, we'll probably do a separate tutorial on the Selenium IDE to go through all the functionality and features uh, that is available through the IDE. For some reason, if Selenium IDE is unable to find the element, you can always come down and play around with these settings. Other than the selected default target value, it has CSS, document.find by the position, or XPath. If the option you're looking for is not available, like ID or other attributes you want to locate your element, you can just type it in directly. and it will still work. Also, you can change the value. You can also toggle a breakpoint at any location. So I want to stop this script right after I log in successfully. So I'm going to toggle a breakpoint right at this location. So I'm going to right click and click toggle breakpoint. So a script is going to execute from the start all the way to the this point and it will stop. Let's run it. As you can see, script stop. If there's an issue on this screen, I can make a script execute all the way to the screen and pause, and then I can manually walk through it to find the issue. To execute it step by step, you click on this button. As you can see, it's executing step by step. So if you look at it, the command on the left hand side tells the script what kind of action to perform. On target, it tells how to find that element on the page. If the recorded value doesn't work, you can always go and experiment with other available values. So we're going to stop here and we're going to export this script to Python language. You have an option of exporting this script to other languages also. To export it, we'll go to File, export test case as and you have option of C sharp Java Python Ruby so for now we're going to export it as Python 2 unit test web driver you also have option of exporting it as remote control for remote web driver so I'm going to go ahead and click on this it will ask me for a location where I want to save this script so script is exported let's look at it I saved the script to the root directory of this project Let's open it. You can try to run this script by right clicking on the script and selecting run unit test in IDE script one. As you can see, I was able to run exported script without any changes. And you can also see a very simple report on the left hand side in this pane. The script ran successfully. So let's walk through the generated script and see what are different sections that are available into this. If you click on anywhere in the script and you hold down the control shift button on a keyboard, 
and press minus and it should collapse the script. If you open the class, here are the different script sections. And here are the imports. Since we already have Selenium driver package installed, we're not seeing any errors for these imports. So if we look at the script, it's basically a class. It could be in any name. Setup is initializing the browser with some variables. As you can see this, the base URL is the one we typed it into browser. There are other things we'll talk about later on. The next we see test IDE script one, and that holds the original script. While looking at this method, the very first line you see in the method is the self.driver. So self is used in a similar manner as you use this keyword in Java or other languages. But self is not a keyword. It's just a variable name that represents the instance of an object. So here we're saying the instance of an object dot driver assign the value to a local variable driver. As you can see we're initializing this self dot driver in the setup method. So in setup method we're saying web driver dot firefox. So self dot driver is initialized here. And we so can look at the syntax. In so basically, method. you have so once you initialize that, you can a web browser it. object driver which is driver. Get. So get is a Selenium you're method to go find to an a element. Specific URL. So you're, you're saying self dot base URL, which is username. this you initialized in the setup method. So you want to once find you get to the, the URL element, of your application, which has a username page, username. You can interact with that page. You can say driver you dot to find element clear the value. So by name is one of the so methods you the can find an element with. You have other methods that are available to you. Like if you type in driver dot. As you can see, you have many methods available to you. Find element by name. Find element by class name. Find element by CSS selector. So whatever attributes are available for you to find an element on your web page, you can use appropriate method within here to find your element and interact with it. So I'm doing this for folks who are beginners with automation, walking through the Selenium syntax so they understand how this syntax works. The very first line right after navigating to a URL is saying find element by name. And the name value is username. So let's look at it. This is the very first element that you were typing in or clearing. So if you right click and click on inspect within Firefox and you look at the value, so this is what you're saying basically here. This method find element by name, that means look for the name in the HTML that has a value username. This is the exact value. So it, it's going to locate this element. This right here. As you can see, it's highlighted when I click on it. So looking for this. Just keep in mind, when you have multiple elements in the page with the same value or the same attribute, then you will have a problem and you need to somehow uniquely identify them using a different value or using an expat. So if there's a value already in there, it will clear it. Send keys is another action within the Selenium driver that actually types in the value in the text box. And then it does the same thing with the password. It clears the password field if there's already pre-filled stuff in there. And it types in the password in there, which is Mercury. Next, it locates the uh, element login. So if we look at this image that we clicked in to login, you can see that its name is login which matches, it finds it, and it clicks it. So that is a login piece right here. You can see this error. This error is happening due to the fact that once you click login, there is a little bit delay, and you see browser uh, clocking, uh, waiting for the login. For now, you can ignore this error. Since it's not affecting our script, there is a difference between a Selenium IDE script and exported script. IDE script has a built-in wait functionality in there that you can use, but once you export to a specific language, you have to implement these by yourself. But you do control it on a two level. You can put an implicit wait, and the implicit wait is already initialized in the setup. 
it waits up to 30 seconds before the element is available on a page. You can change that according to your requirements. For now, you can ignore this. You don't need it because this will handle it as long as the request completes within the 30 seconds. So next, when it logs in, it clicks on that trip type radio button. I'm not going to go walk through the entire script. Uh, this script, I just created for people who are learning and uh, they're new to the uh, Selenium automation much quicker way of generating the script and play around with it. It helps a lot with learning Selenium automation. How does Selenium syntax work? So if you look at it, most of the line of codes is finding elements by name because the name is available. If it was not available, it would search and find it by other means like ID or XPath. But you do see one of them where it was unable to use the name. It used a CS selector and uh, you can see one of them, it's using XPath. So idea was to recording this script and bringing it in here and uh, talking about it a little bit to, to just give you a level set on how the script is generated and what it looks like and why do we need automation framework instead of having these scripts. So if you look at the script, script has a hard-coded field values and um, data that you use. If you want to use multiple instances of script with different data, you would have to make the copies of it and then uh, input different data in it and run it. And that is a lot of work and it's a maintenance nightmare basically. That's where automation frameworks come into play. So automation framework allow us to manage our test cases, our data, our artifacts in organized fashion. We use frameworks to develop reusable components using different data and help us to organize the automation. So that is it for this tutorial. So next tutorial, we'll take a look at this automation test case and a thought process, how to convert this into an automation framework that will help us to build usable components and data drive these components using different data set. So thanks for tuning in. Till next time, bye.